Hello everyone, this is Dr. Irfan Kamaruddin Andani. In today's video, we will try to cover sagittal skeletal analysis with the help of Steiner's analysis. So without wasting any time, let's begin. As you know that we can evaluate two planes on lateral cephalometric radiograph. One is sagittal plane or anterior posterior plane and another is vertical plane. And what do we actually see and trace in the radiograph? We evaluate skeletal structures, we evaluate dental structures and soft tissues. Therefore, we have divided cephalometric measurement analysis into three main components. We evaluate skeletal structures, we evaluate dental and then soft tissues as well. And when we are evaluating skeletal structures, we analyze in sagittal plane and vertical plane both as we see these two planes in the lateral cephalometric tracings. But you must be thinking that why don't we evaluate dental structures in these two planes? Because dental impressions and dental models are good enough and much better way to assess the dental problems like how much crowding your patient has or how much open bite or deep bite and what is canine and molar relationship that you can see on digital impressions or models in a better way. But for skeletal problems, this radiograph is the best to measure. So today we will just try to learn that what are skeletal problems in sagittal plane and how to measure them with the help of Steiner's analysis. But before going into the detail of any analysis, we should know that what are we actually looking for? And what are the different variations that we can find in sagittal plane? Like look at this face. This face looks very normal to me or you can call it class 1 profile. But there are different variations that you can encounter while treating them. If you examine this patient, this patient has a very straight profile. Whether you measure the angle of convexity of this face by drawing two lines. One line is from glabella to subnasal and second line from subnasal to most prominent point of the chin which is soft tissue pogonion. So these two lines are pretty straight in this face. So you can call it skeletal class 1 profile. Another way to assess is that draw a straight line that drops from glabella straight downwards. This is known as true vertical line and upper lip, lower lip and chin all should be in very close vicinity to this line in a normal face. Now let's try to validate this finding on the lateral cephalometric radiograph using Steiner's analysis. For that you will have to draw a line from cella to nasion and another line from nasion to point A and measure the angle between these two lines. Now here you can see that this angle is approximately 84 degrees and the normal value is ranging from 80 to 84 that means the position of the maxilla in reference to the cranial base is pretty normal in this patient. Reminding you here that Steiner's uses anterior cranial base as a reference plane which is from cella to nasion and he evaluate the sagittal position of maxilla and mandible in reference to this anterior cranial base. Now let's try to evaluate the position of the mandible with the same reference of cranial base. Draw another line from nasion to point B. This is NB line and again measure the angle between SN line and NB line. This is approximately 82 degrees in this patient. That is in normal range which is between 78 to 82 degrees. Now this shows that mandible is also located in normal position with reference to the cranial base. And we are talking about sagittal plane, right? One more important point or measurement that you have to do in this analysis is the difference between an A line and an B line, the angle between these two lines. Now you don't have to actually measure this angle. If you subtract SNB from SNA, you will get the result. Like in this patient, the difference between SNA and SNB is around 2 degrees. If you subtract 82 from 84, the result is 2 degrees and this 2 degree is also in normal ranges. Angle A and B actually tells you the actual discrepancy between upper and lower jaw in sagittal plane. 
So how would you conclude the findings of Steiner's analysis in this phase? This patient has a skeletal class 1 relationship because maxilla and mandible are in normal relationship in sagittal plane. How can I say that? Because the value of A and B is between 0 and 4 degrees. However, if you evaluate this phase with the same method by drawing the angle of convexity, this patient has convex profile or you use true vertical line to evaluate. This shows that mandible is little bit deficient. Now let's try to validate this phase on lateral cephalometric radiograph. This is the situation here. Now you can see that angle A and B has increased. SNA is pretty normal again, but SNB is 74 that shows that mandible is deficient in this sagittal plane. And that has actually resulted in A and B of 8 degrees. How would you conclude? This is a skeletal class 2 patient because whenever the angle A and B is more than 4 degrees, we call it skeletal class 2. And what is the reason? It's mandibular deficiency because S and B is reduced. Therefore, to treat this patient, we have to focus on mandible. And I have treated this patient with functional appliances and you can see that now his profile is pretty straight. Now look at this patient. She also has convex profile, but when you draw a true vertical line, her mandible is near normal in anterior posterior plane. However, the upper lip is far ahead of this line that shows that the problem lies in upper jaw here or maybe upper dentition that we have to see. If you try to see on lateral cephalometric radiograph, this is the problem in this patient. SNA has actually increased. It's more than 84 degrees. And that has resulted in A and B value more than 4 again. So how would you conclude? She also has a skeletal class 2 profile, but the problem lies in maxilla. So you can say that skeletal class 2 because of maxillary prognathism. Now while treating this patient, you have to keep this point in mind. You won't grow the mandible forward, but you will work on maxillary part. And here I have tried to camouflage the case. And after the extraction of upper premolars, her upper teeth along with upper lip has moved back. And this is giving a straight profile now. Now look at this case. Here the profile is concave. And if you draw a true vertical line, chin and lower lip are far ahead of this line. That shows that she is actually a skeletal class 3 patient. How would you confirm this? from lateral cephalometric readings. This is the situation in this patient. If you see SNA angle, it is pretty normal. However, SNB has been increased and that has resulted in reduction of A and B angle because if you subtract 88 from 80, then the result will be minus 8. And whenever A and B value is less than 0, that means in negative, you will call it skeletal class 3. And the reason here is the mandibular prognathism. Now, when you treat this patient, you have to keep in mind the lower jaw. So I have tried to camouflage this case by extraction of lower premolars and moving the in lower incisors back. And now the patient has a straight profile. Before concluding this topic, I would like to announce my orthodontic certificate course, which is now available online as well. If any one of my viewers is interested in that course, you can WhatsApp on this given number. Thank you very much and have a good day.